Another very busy week this week. Uh, among those items that were discussed on the floor was Senate Bill 224, which the short definition for it, it means that it deals with discovery in terms of certain court proceedings. That's exactly right. Now, it's an uncommon bill because it does deal with court proceedings, so it directly addresses the court rules. Probably the easiest way to describe that it's uncommon is that it can't be combined with legislation. So it has to be a standalone bill because of that, because of what it actually addresses. And the courts are not always happy when we go into their rules rules and make changes because they would prefer to be fully in charge of those rules. But there are times whenever the legislature senses that maybe the scales of justice are out of balance. This was an attempt to try to restore some balance. Fundamentally, that bill began because he saw some significant differences in the federal rules and the state rules, where he thought the federal rules brought much more order and predictability into the courtroom setting, less of a wild, wild west environment. And so some of this was simply trying to say, let's adopt the federal rule for this particular aspect. We've tried to do some of that with the Daubert standard in terms of expert witnesses. We tried to address expert witnesses again with some further descriptions. I think we ended up finally stripping that out of the bill and as a part of the negotiations process. There were a number of things that we did leave on the table as we negotiated through the night. We were on that bill. I don't remember how many hours, but we finally adjourned, I think, about 2.30 a.m. with a bill that I think is good. I think it's going to be a positive step towards reform. It does deal with an aspect of law called proportionality, which basically deals with whether you ask for unreasonable discovery, whether or not your discovery request is appropriate given the value of a case. We were able to keep that largely intact. When you talk to the attorneys, some will say that that really is the most helpful because it kind of sets the pattern that helps everything else. And so that's one of them. Part of it was just modernizing some of the rules, especially in terms of discovery. There were things in the rules that dealt with phonograph records. So not too many people are concerned about phonograph records anymore, but there are other data forms that are significant. There might have been something in there about microfish. I don't know, but a lot of people don't know what microfish is. And so things like that, there was a lot of that. There was not much controversy over those kind of fixes. Those were the kinds of things that we tried to address. There were things about depositions and how many depositions you could require in certain situations without having to go to the court and say, I really think we need more about how long depositions can last. Some things that were tried to help streamline the system some, and I ended up with a very good bill that it will be a benefit to Missouri courts. As late as Wednesday night was with that bill, Monday night was a lot later with Senate Bill 391, which deals with CAFOs. That's right. I think it was 7.30 a.m. Tuesday morning when we actually adjourned after that bill. And, you know, that's a bill that is charged with emotion. Certainly both sides of that issue have issues that are important to them. And that's one of the reasons it took that amount of time is because that demonstrates just how controversial it is. And we can't just put controversial issues on the side up here. I guess we could, but there are a lot of us that feel like that we really do need to address some of these issues and at least from a legal standpoint resolve them and there will be some people that will be very pleased with the outcome of that filibuster and compromise and there will be others that are not. The week apparently reserved for controversial bills there's a house bill that addresses eminent domain that's currently making its way through at least one Senate committee. Right that has to do with the grain belt direct current line that is to be built across the state of Missouri northern part of the state and it's been around for years different forms it finally was a able to meet all of the standards that the Public Service Commission rules require for it to be declared a public utility. So it is now recognized and defined as a public utility, and that gives them the right of eminent domain as a public utility. And so, But that doesn't necessarily mean everybody's happy about it. I do support that line. I think once the Public Service Commission designated them a public utility, you can't really say, well, they don't get the same rights as any other public utility. And it is a property rights issue, but eminent domain is property right. I mean, it's part of property rights. It's something the state has relative to property rights. I'm sure there are constituents in my district, you know, are not happy with my position on that, but we had a lengthy hearing in the Senate. The hearing room was packed, but it was jammed. You couldn't get in. We had overflow into the room next door because of so much interest in that. And property rights is a serious issue. All of us take that very seriously. But I also acknowledge eminent domain as being a very serious issue. And I think once the Public Service Commission 
Commission accepted the Grain Belt line had met all of those standards, I don't think they have any choice. They have to designate it as a public utility. So that's where it is. My position on that is that as a public utility, they are rightfully able to impose eminent domain. They're in something like 28 or or 30 states, and they have yet to use eminent domain in any of those states. I'm in hopes that they won't have to use it in Missouri, but they do have that right as a public utility. House gave victory to Senate Bill 7 this week, the Joinder and Venue Bill, so on its way to the governor's desk. Right. I was pleased with that. That bill passed, I think, on Wednesday with a very solid vote. I think it was 100 to 46, I think, was the vote over there. And it's another one. I am really pleased that we're able to try to straighten some of that out. That was what I consider a serious abuse of our court system. We're hoping that provisions of that bill will address that sufficiently so that the attorneys that might want to manipulate that, again, won't be able to. I mean, it was an arena where you could have thousands of cases in Missouri and just a few percent of those would actually be affecting Missourians. And that was never the intent of our law. And I think the joinder venue fixes will resolve much of that.